Hi, this is David, and welcome to part two in the series on Camtasia Studio 8, how to make your first video. In part one, we reviewed Camtasia's interface, its work canvas, as we got familiar with all of the tools and techniques that Camtasia provides you to edit your videos with. Now, in part two, we're going to use Camtasia's screen recorder to go out and get something to edit. A screen recorder simply means that it captures whatever is on your computer screen. That can include a slideshow, it can include a website, it can include any piece of software that you have on your computer that you wish to demonstrate. You screen capture that, bring it back into Camtasia, and then mix it with images, live video, audio, and callouts, and anything else you need to make that a good piece of video for instructional use or training use or whatever use you need to make of it. Okay, so let's go use our screen capture and get something to edit. To initiate screen recording, go to the big red Record the Screen button and click. Camtasia interface will minimize, leaving you with a view of your computer screen, the green dotted outline of the recording area, and Camtasia's recorder tool. Let's take a look at the recorder tool's main features and functions. The tool automatically will hide itself when you click record. Under select area are two options. Full screen. This will record your full screen corner to corner, no matter the screen size. This function has its uses, but they are limited. When trying to zoom in on anything recorded on full screen setting, things get very fuzzy very fast. You will most often use custom. Notice on the drop down menu there are some standard presettings. The first setting is for widescreen, 16 9 aspect ratio. This is the aspect ratio you should use for YouTube. High definition HD is 1280 720. 1280 720 is what you should try to record your screen videos as, unless your computer can't handle it, not enough memory, or not a wide enough screen. Also, sometimes 1280 is just too wide, especially for web pages. Next to custom are the fields where you enter width and height dimensions. Remember, always stay in the same aspect ratio. There are two ways to do this. Number one, set the standard 1280 by 720 in the windows. Hit return after entering each number. Next, link the two parts of the chain together. This means that no matter what number you put in one field, the other field will change to maintain your original aspect ratio. For example, let's change 1280 to 1000. Hit return and watch how the second number changes to maintain 16-9 aspect ratio. A second way to make sure you're always maintaining the same aspect ratio, regardless of the size of the recording area, is to use an aspect ratio calculator. You can download these for free from the internet. I use aspect ratio calculator. Google it, you can get the same thing. I first click on the aspect ratio, the shape, I wish to maintain. Then I enter a number in either of the two fields, width or height. The calculator will then tell me what the other number should be. On the recorded input side, there is a tool for recording your webcam at the same time you record your screen. This is good for informal videos. I use it for grading papers, but I don't recommend it for making videos. Your production flow should focus on one stream at a time. Video, get it right. Audio, get it right first. Special effects, etc. Now, next to this is the audio control. It has a drop down menu which allows you to select your microphone if you will be using one while recording. Again, for informal purposes, talking live while recording live is okay, but not when making a production 
for public consumption. Clicking on Record System Audio will bring up a slider for you to test your system audio. System audio includes any sound produced by the media you're recording. If you're recording a website and the website plays music, that music will be recorded. If you're recording a website and a narrator comes on to say something, what that narrator says will be recorded. If you are playing back audio while you are recording the screen, your playback of that audio will be recorded. You can delete it later. The option selection takes you to an important dialog box that allows you to configure everything about your recording. The other way of accessing this important dialog box is by clicking on Tools, then Options. Let's go through the settings for this important box. The first tab is General. Leave the two Help boxes checked. Leave the two Capture boxes checked. And be sure to place a check mark in Disable Screen Saver. You don't want that coming on during a recording. Under Saving, you have two choices, T-Rec and AVI. A T-Rec file stands for TechSmith Recording. A T-Rec or TechSmith Recording file can only be played back by Camtasia Studio. But T-Rec is also the only file type that allows cursor effects and some of the other features in Camtasia, so I recommend that you use it. An AVI file, AVI stands for Audio Video Interweave, provides the same raw data as a T-Rec, but without the feature options. Okay, inputs. Unless you have a reason to change it, the screen capture rate should be 30 frames per second. Audio. Again, you have the choice to record your microphone live while you capture video. And again, I advise against it unless it's for a quick informal demo or video response. Record system audio. Usually, you will want to record this so that you will have a realistic capture of what was seen and heard on your computer screen. Webcam, we've already covered it. Now, there are a few important settings under Program. Under Region Appearance, all three should be checked. Same for the first three under Workflow, but do not have a check mark in Hide Preview Window. Under Minimize, you choose where the recorder tool will hide while you're recording. Click OK. We're now ready to record, and here are the steps that I use. 1. Set the recording window to 1280 times 720 at first. You can always change it later once you get your media up. 2. Bring up the website, slideshow, video, or the software program to be recorded. Now I'm going to bring up the Citation Tool website since I'm making a video for Citation Machine. 3. Fit the media, in this case a website, into the recording area. 4. Do a 2-5 to five second recording to make sure your edges are where you want them and you're capturing exactly what you want at the edges. Click Record. Wait for the countdown. Wait a few seconds. Then click Stop and watch the playback. Delete that test and then readjust your edges if you have to. 5. Now bring up your audio. Hopefully this is the real audio for the video that's already been edited. Place your audio player next to the video screen capture area. 6. Click Record in Camtasia. Then immediately during the 3, 2, 1 countdown, move your cursor to the play button of the audio player. Start the audio at the end of the countdown. 7. 
listen to the audio, and perform the actions narrated in it. 8. When finished recording, press F10 or click the stop button. The playback will begin. If the playback is what you want, go to the next step. If not, start over. Step 10. Click on Save and Edit. You'll be prompted to give the capture a name and save it to your production folder. Camtasia will then open up the work canvas with your recording on the timeline. Now, alternatively, you can click on the drop down arrow and select Save As. Give it a name and save it to your production folder. This will prevent the clip from going to your timeline, which is a good thing if you've already been working on a project and you have things positioned exactly where you want them. Now remember, you can always hit Control Z for undo if this happens and you don't want it to. You use basically the same procedures for recording a PowerPoint. However, keep these points in mind. First, you will need to go to Slideshow, Set Up Slideshow, and select Browse by an Individual in order to be able to resize the PowerPoint for the custom screen recording dimensions. Second, after you start the show, still use the 1280 by 720 dimensions. This means you will be recording the black areas on the left and right. These black areas are going to show in the YouTube player anyhow because a normal PowerPoint is 4-3 aspect ratio. By recording at 16-9 and recording the blank areas, YouTube will not resize your video during the upload process and therefore not cause it to lose resolution. Third, use the same technique of playing the audio while you record in order to know the timing for the slides and their animations.